on my way to the Fuji X Summit NYC 2024. I'm excited about this because I just pre-ordered the brand new announced today. What's today? May 13? Fuji X-T50. I had Google Alerts set up and I'm not in the first batch according to this email that uh, the unit I ordered is on back order already and I think I ordered it the first day it was announced. It's at a place called Photo Care, which I've heard of but I've never been to. I, was, I could have sworn it would have been an Adoram or a B&H but this is cool too. Support your local, uh, even more local photo shops. On the instructions, it said to bring your SD card. Um, so I brought my SD card in my Sony a7 IV. I don't own a Fuji yet. I pre-own a Fuji. This is photo care. Wow. Yo, the elevator is branded with Fuji. Is there, is there a Fuji corporate office in here? Give me a job. This is it. Yo, just when I thought this was gonna be some rinky dink thing at a at a uh, a little Photoshop storefront. Look, look at this. Just like at a lot of these photo events. Uh, we got models for test shots, etc. Now the question is, do I whip out the A7 IV? Yeah, okay, I see, I see non-Fuji cameras. We good. There's Omar Gonzalez. Went on a nice photo walk with him almost a year ago. Empire State Building. Wobbly tile to fall off right over this edge. Ha 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 ha. I rebuke it. Oh, nah. The XT50 is here. Oh, I can't believe it. Alright, I see a Nikon ZFC. I see a Canon. That's like a 14 to 20 something. And I think we got the XT50 over there. Do we? Oh! This is the XT50? Um, you're gonna pop a card in there? Yes. It's in here in the battery compartment. Let me get that one out. So we got to put our own SD cards in the pre launch XT50s that they had there and take them for a spin on these models. Yeah, that's kind of the coolest thing about these. You can make a recipe and you don't have to edit them. Okay. You know, for like fam or whatever, hanging out. But you also have the option to shoot raw if you Why, want. Why is that like a color uh, uh, oh color my preset? Goodness. Like yeah, so you know how up here, so I don't have another camera on me, but like up here. <laughs> yeah. You want to put the card in there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, up here, you know, you've got your film sims. So all of these you can dial them in on the highlight, on the shadow, on the contrast. Yeah. And all that's done like through the menu here. But the Sony has really good color too. Yeah, yeah. That's why I recognize it. They them. caught up. Oh yeah. yeah. Because their skin tones were crazy. Like, this is so ago. small. Well, I have a Sony R and um, it's a five year old camera. The R. Film recipe dial. Yeah. Sim recipe dial. Yeah. Or do you process, how do you process them? Oh my gosh. Uh, now, the aesthetic of Fuji hardware is obviously a huge selling point, but equally, if not more so, are the film sims. And the Fuji XT50 here, just to the left of the viewfinder, replaces the XT30's drive dial with a film sims dial so you can easily just click to one of eight or nine I think eight preset film sims and have three of your own customized recipes ready to go you know from scratch or from one of the 20 included film sims which yes it's unique to Fuji that 
part of the hardware is the included software and you can't like use any of the new film sims on the old camera although you could sort of reverse engineer any new film sim on an older camera and i'm especially excited and looking forward to messing around with um classic chrome which everybody's theorizing melinda sue gordon used and tweaked for her bts shots of the oppenheimer production um those shots are now famous she shot it on an xh1 xh2 i'm also hugely looking forward to making and using the classic cuban negative recipe that uh osan bilgi made part of my pronunciation which is a tweak of uh classic negative now remember i've gotten to play with a few but this is going to be my first fuji camera so i'm excited about some some uh sims that everyone else is already familiar with what do you know look at that it's crazy but this is amazing this is a this is so charming look at the size comparison much smaller profile but actually the body's a lot smaller Sheesh. And this is not weather sealed. <laughs> and it's still trucking along. Now one of the few things that keeps the X-T50 from basically being completely as powerful as the X-T5 is its lack of weather sealing. Um, but we did get to test this in the rain. The X-Summit was on a rooftop garden. But it did start raining seriously. Okay. It wasn't like a downpour, but it was a regular old rain, and the sample models seemed to work fine the whole evening. Monochrome. Yeah, yeah. The roof looks fuller. Jeez. Now, part of the reason I'm in such amazement here is because of how good the film sims look. A lot of them look straight out of camera. Now, some of them, some of them, yeah, they needed they needed a lot of work, but you know that's largely because I'm sure each sim is not made for every situation, and the ones that were really working well in this environment, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to just even perfect them further or get them tweaked further to my liking and the other thing i was marveling at here was just how tack sharp the images were i mean granted they're professionally styled professionally lit and we were on these sample bodies using uh i think a 56 millimeter 1.2 or 1.5 lens so it's a prime lens but still it was so crispy and sharp i mean i've used similar the equivalent prime lenses on my Sony a7 IV, my full frame a7 IV, that have been no sharper than this, and sometimes less sharp. So you know that 40 megapixel sensor uh, really helps, but even the 26 megapixel sensors on the last generation of cameras, X-T4, X-T4, when I tested those, super, super sharp and nice, so there's some Fuji magic there. This is just such a really nice image that this Fuji puts out. Having said that, you're not going to beat Sony when it comes to autofocus. And Fuji gets better and better with its autofocus issues. Iteration after iteration, release after release. But I ran into it a couple times here that I would never run into it with Sony. I mean, I, I used my a7 IV here at this same event with the same people, and I wasn't having the same problems. Like, this image here, you have a one face in the frame, and it's not... The, the AF isn't latching onto it. It's kind of... That's kind of a problem. And I would say that happened maybe 1 out of 20, 1 out of 30 shots. Probably more like 1 out of 20, which is not good. Especially for this type of set where there's one face and there's a wall behind her. And she's lit. So I've only done a few of these uh, photographer social events. One thing I'm learning, as much as everybody loves everything, like a, like a Fuji and a Nikon or whatever, as charming as they are, and like a... 
everybody has a Canon and Sony. Everybody has a Canon or a Sony. Everybody has a Canon or a Sony. Look at this view. This guy, guy's draped up. We got the work camera downstairs and the fun camera upstairs. We got an XT4. The original. That's like the the 5D. That's like the Canon 5D of uh, Fuji. This is a terrible angle. The shadows are crazy over here. On that side, much better. So I got to hold the uh, GFX 100S Mark II. Mess with it a little bit. It's great. It's medium format. That's a whole nother world to me. My card is full. What am I new? We got a little gallery. We got a little exhibit here with uh, footage taken with the XT50 and the GFX 100 S Mark II. Looks really, of course, it looks really good. I'm gonna head back on over here <clears throat> to the XT50 station. See what's going on. Now I didn't want to hog the X-T50 again so I just took some more final shots with my a7 IV and you can see straight out of camera the a7 IV has a much more natural look. These are the JPEGs um, than what you get with the Fuji. It's the Fuji's a, a, a style choice and of course you can edit any raw photo from any camera um, to your liking and even get it to mimic one of these Fuji film sims but it would take forever part of the allure of the Fuji is what you get straight out of camera and that you can tweak just a little bit to make something to your liking um, and that is eons ahead in Fuji of anything you can any preset you can make in a Sony or a Canon or even what we've seen so far of the infinite LUT possibilities in the Panasonic S9 but you know that's that's part of the fun of Fuji now as we rewatch and see some new footage of the festivities here I want to go over some thoughts I have about what I'm looking forward to with the Fuji X-T50 and what I'm looking forward to for Fuji as a whole and the pros and cons of the upcoming and pre-ordered X-T50. Now some of these cons, they're just a matter of personal taste such as shape. I don't love the shape of the X-T50. I like the size but I don't love the shape. I'm looking for a rangefinder style Fuji that I could just slide in my pocket, slide in my back pocket, put in the front pocket of a Jansport. Um, and I can do that, but I could do it a lot easier if that viewfinder bump weren't at the top. You can get that with the XC4 or X106, but on resale, those cost right now even more than the XT50 does brand new. But we'll see how much the XT50 ends up being itself on resale. No weather sealing. Weather sealing gives you a lot of peace of mind, even if you don't end up really needing it that much, unless you're like shooting in a torrential downpour. No drive mode dial. It was nice to just click in to video mode on the older bodies. That's, you know, a trade-off for the film sims dial, which I love. The DCI crop, this is an issue with most Fuji cameras, if not all of them. And an issue that only I seem to care about. One of the things I loved about my Panasonic days was on the GH4 and GH5 and other models when you went into DCI mode you actually got some extra footage on the side that might not be an issue anymore too much with open gate two Fuji cameras I think already have open gate video shooting so that sort of negates that complaint I don't like the tilt screen I said what I said I would prefer a tilt screen like the XC4 tilt screen that tilts 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 until it's flipped up over so you could still take selfies I know I know what the pros say oh you don't need a selfie if you want to take a selfie use your phone or get a mirror that, to carry around that you can clasp onto your camera no the ability to take a selfie and shoot selfie for vlogs when you're doing your street photography and whatever is something I really want um, and this is just a general Fuji complaint. Lack of availability of lenses with no stepped aperture, with stepless aperture. I need a zoom lens, a stepless zoom lens for video shooting. Um, the pros, quite a few upgrades, namely from the X-T30 Mark II 
slow motion shooting, little, it's a little bonus. You could just shoot high frame rate on the X-T30 Mark II and slow it down in post. Um, but log shooting, something the X-T50 has that its predecessor did not. And a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, just a regular line in as opposed to the previous X-T30 which had a mini line in. Another pro is the size, even though it's not my favorite shape, I love the size. It's so small and compact, especially compared to my a7 IV and compared to a lot of other APS-C cameras. Uh, another pro is the water resistance, even though it's not water sealed, those bodies were out for hours getting used in something between a drizzle and a light downpour and they kept going, they kept on but no damage. So I like that even though it's not weather sealed, it seems fairly water resistant. Uh, the film sims, another huge pro of course for any Fuji, but this coupled with the new film sims dial is awesome. I love clicking into uh, eight film simulations plus three that I can have customized myself ready to go, it's awesome. This is a bit of a contentious issue, but the 40 megapixel sensor is a bonus. I love it. I know you don't need it. I know it's totally unnecessary. You could shoot something for a billboard on the previous generation of Fuji's, but the 40 megapixel sensor, really nice, crispy, in focus, sharp, tack sharp images coming out of that. And I appreciate the 4K DCI resolution. They seem to be making that only for me. No one else seems to care about that. Plus, I don't think there's really a 6K DCI protocol, but like the 6K equivalent of 4K DCI, you can shoot on that camera, even if it does crop. And last but not least, the IBIS. I've been spoiled by Sony and Catalyst Browse with not really having to worry about IBIS as long as I'm at the right minimum shutter rate. But the IBIS on the X-T50 is decent and I'm glad to have it. I'll be glad to have it. With that, one thing that I wish Fuji would do is just cease with a few of the lines, at least two or three of them, because some of these lines are becoming so similar to the other ones, like the XE line and the X100 line. Just stop making the X100 and make more XE4s and upcoming XE5s so we can have interchangeable lenses. Um, and like the XT30 Mark II and the XT50 are so similar to the XT5 and XT4 that maybe they could just be merged into one line. But other than that, great camera. I'm so excited to be owning one soon. Um, and the Fuji X Summit was great. It was like the Build Expo. Everybody was there passionate about the gear, passionate about getting to shoot, having a fun time, refreshments, music. Rooftop garden, super classy. Thank you, Fuji. Um, looking forward to making more content with this X-T50. Check out my street photos page. I'll link it in the description. And stay tuned here for more architecture videos, history videos, food reviews, gear reviews, all that jazz. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fujifilm X Summit.